It was a political resurrection. Grover Cleveland is no longer alone. Now two presidents have served and lost and risen from the ashes to win again. Donald Trump didn't just win the White House. He did something rare for Republicans. He won the popular vote. The Electoral College gives you the right to govern. Winning that and the popular vote gives you a mandate. Welcome back, Warriors. It's me, Linda B. Thank you all so much for joining me here today. Today, happy Veterans Day. All of those who risked their lives for our great country, thank you so much. Honor to you and your families. God bless you all. So there's talk about a recount. A recount. Oh, the peaceful transfer of power has now turned into a recount. That's right. Before we get into it, don't forget to like this video, comment, share, subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell, watch the video to the end. Now let's get into it. So Kamala Harris campaign, according to what's trending out there in the social media world, wants an election recount. But is this true? Let's check it out. All right, guys, here we go with all of this craziness going on right now. It says breaking Democrats push for a recount, a questionable move as they claim this data highlights issues with the USA election 2024. Despite the fact they lost in every county requiring voter ID, winning only in places where oversight is questionable, they have they considered that this data might also point to issues in the 2020 election. So it looks like they're wanting a recount. They don't seem to be paying attention to the fact that Democrat politician leaders are not asking for a recount. Now, this is this one because they know they lost and don't want to be embarrassed again by a national recount as they would be. They might even lose by more. So we have conflicting posts here. Some saying the Democrats want a recount, some saying they do not because they will be embarrassed again because, you know, Donald Trump won all the seven swing states, won the popular vote as well, which he did not do in 2016, but he did this time. It says Dem voters are demanding a recount. Oh, it says the voters are demanding a recount, not, not, let's be clear. Democrat politicians and leaders are not wanting the recount. It's the Democrat voters that want a recount. Our damn politician leaders won't fight and have given, won't fight and have given up. They ask us to vote for them, but won't fight for us. We are being told to ignore all the evidence and hand over our democracy to a monster. So this person is not for Trump. All right. So, well, that lasted not long at all. Democrats are demanding a presidential recount. So um, it looks like the Democrat voters are. Let's read some more. It's the Democrats' turn to demand a rightful recount. Hell, a revote. Y'all should go out and vote in person. Ballots were set on fire and votes were disqualified. Allegedly. That's what they say. Allegedly, allegedly. I don't believe that at all. I'm not saying that at all. Um, this is famous meme of this woman screaming right here. <laughs> Dems are already calling for a recount. Silly election deniers. I say go for it. These still projected numbers are far too close. Y'all remember when Jill Stein called for recounts in 2016, right? She stopped the nonsense when results, when results showed her losing votes. So that's what they got, that they're wanting a recount. But I found something else quite interesting as well. It says Kamala Harris is now asking for donations to fund recounts and other legal challenges in several key U.S. House and Senate races. OK, this is talking about House and Senate races right here. And it says first and this is from Harris Fight Fund. First and foremost, we want to acknowledge the fear, confusion, and sadness many of you are feeling at this moment. For others, you may be looking for something meaningful and important to channel your emotions toward. If that's you, then we're asking you to make a donation to the Democratic Party today. Here's why this request is so important. As you read this, there are U.S. Senate and House races that are either too close to call or within the margin of recounts or certain legal challenges. They all need our help to get across the finish line. 
Wow. And it says, can you please rush a contribution to the Harris Fight Fund program today? We will put your donation to work, making sure we succeed and count every vote in these final races. They OK, so we know that in order to get things done, Donald Trump needs the House and the Senate. OK, that's where things get done, because Democrats are going to vote the way they vote. And then you got rhinos to consider. But we need the the Senate and House races. They've already been called, to my understanding. I'm, but they want to recount because they're within the margin of error. And so they're going to push for this now because they can't have, you know, the evil powers that be. The last thing they want is Donald Trump in the White House and the House and the Senate in his favor. That's the last thing they want. But let's look at this clip right here. We're going to check out Donald Trump talking about the golden age and some more information from Fox News. Take a look. Safe and prosperous America that our children deserve and that you deserve. This will truly be the golden age of America. It was a political resurrection. Grover Cleveland is no longer alone. Now two presidents have served and lost and risen from the ashes to win again. Donald Trump didn't just win the White House. He did something rare for Republicans. He won the popular vote. The Electoral College gives you the right to govern. Winning that and the popular vote gives you a mandate. He won every battleground state, created new ones, won with voters. Other Republicans cannot sway. And he took the Senate and the House with him. Kamala Harris underperformed Joe Biden everywhere. And she took her time processing that. And even then, I'm not sure she got the message. In our nation, we owe loyalty not to a president or a party, but to the Constitution of the United States and loyalty to our conscience and to our God. My allegiance to all three is why I am here to say, while I concede this election, I do not concede the fight that fueled this campaign. That might be why she lost, fighting the wrong battles with the wrong weapons for Hollywood actors and college professors, but not for you. So she conceded the election, but she will not concede the fight that fueled her campaign. See, you know, when and you know what, let me just say this. These Democrats were too nice. OK, it's like someone who, you know, can't stand you. I mean, you know this and they're mean to you and they lie on you and call you kind of all sorts of names. And then all of a sudden they're nice to you. You're like, why are they all of a sudden nice? Why are they saying we're going to have a peaceful transfer of power? You know what? They all say the same thing. Peaceful transfer of power. Oh, yes. Peaceful transfer of power. Well, yes, we're going to we could we accept we concede. Mm hmm. Being too nice because I don't trust people like that. You're going to talk about me and call me everything but a true child of God. But then you're all of a sudden nice. You know, I suspect my BS antenna is just beeping. Beep, beep, beep. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. And now, you know, this rhetoric of, you know, I don't concede the fight that can fuel that fuel this campaign. Yeah. And they're supposedly the Democrat voters want to recount, but not the Democrat politicians. We have a fight on our hands. It has not ended. I am afraid it has not. You see what is happening in Arizona with Carrie Lake. There's a lot that's been happening with Arizona lately. What's going on in Arizona? Arizona, what are you guys doing? OK, how does Donald Trump win? Win? And then somehow the Republican, Carrie Lake, does it. They know that they are going to be in up, you know what, creek without a paddle, <laughs> as we say in the South. Sugar, honey, iced tea, creek without a paddle. If Donald Trump is already going to be the president, but also the Senate and the House, that's what they don't want. And that's why we got a little issue going on and, and, you know, all these little issues are starting to pop up because they never really meant what they said. They never mean what they say. They lie. And then, you know, 
Donald Trump has got a meeting with Jim Crow Joe on Wednesday, doesn't he? He's got a meeting. Let's check out this next clip. The White House announcing an Oval Office meeting between President Biden and President-elect Trump. I'm going to see him on Wednesday. Biden following through on his promise earlier this week. On January 20th, we'll have a peaceful transfer of power here in America. Trump and Biden spoke by phone on Wednesday, the president-elect describing the call to NBC's Kristen Welker as very respectful both ways. The invitation, a return to tradition that Trump bucked, never inviting Biden to the White House after he won the 2020 election. Trump only agreeing to an orderly and peaceful transfer of power back then after a violent mob of his supporters stormed the Capitol on January 6th. <laughs> In 2016, then-President Obama sat with Trump in the Oval Office, extending an olive branch after Hillary Clinton's defeat. We now are going to uh, want to do everything we can to help you succeed, because if you succeed, then the country succeeds. That meeting following decades of precedent, Bush to Obama, Clinton to Bush, Bush to Clinton, Reagan to Bush, and Carter to Reagan. This was, I believe, the greatest political movement of all time. Meanwhile, Trump is working out of his Mar-a-Lago home in Florida, focusing on building his new administration. The president-elect already choosing his campaign manager, Susie Wiles, as his new White House chief of staff, the first woman to ever serve in that role. For favoring cabinet candidates who come from outside Washington and have business experience over members of Congress. That's according to two sources familiar with the process. And Aaron, we have late breaking news on some former Trump administration officials who will not be joining the new one. Jose, Trump just posted on his social media platform that he will not be inviting former Ambassador Nikki Haley or former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo to join his new administration and said he appreciated working with them previously. We're going to see how this meeting goes. And you know Donald Trump is not one to pretend, and I know he doesn't do things the conventional way, all those handshakes and peaceful transfer of powers. And I don't know if you guys noticed when he sat next to Obama he looked away for a moment and just had to, you know, put on a face because <laughs> it's not real good at being fake. And I, I just think that, you know, he's just not good at that. I mean, he calls it like he sees it, you know, meeting with someone when he feels like everything was stolen from him is just not his way of doing things. But he finally did it after the whole thing with, you know, the Capitol and all of that. So. That's who we have for our president right now. I am excited. I believe he's, I believe God is using Donald Trump in so many ways. And now all these people fussing about how Kamala lost and they're shaving their heads, these women in this 4B movement. Let me know how you feel paying less for groceries and gas. Let me know how you feel when you don't have to step over illegal migrants or homeless people in the street. Let me know how you feel then, because this is what we're talking about. Well, thank you all so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like this video, comment, share, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell. You all be blessed. Love God, your families, these United States of America, and March on Warriors.